Hey guys, how's everybody doing tonight? Good. Well, enough chit chat. Let's get started with our drawing tonight. Uh, we've done a cougar, we've done a dog, we've done a cat. So I thought tonight we would do something a little bit different. Uh, we're going to do a landscape. Now, landscape is any kind of outdoor scene mountains and valleys and meadows and trees and things like that. Uh, sometimes if it's an ocean, they're called seascapes, but we're going to do a scene with uh, some mountains and trees, and I don't know, maybe we'll add a lake, we'll see. Now I'm starting out with my blue crayon, and I've taken the, the paper off so that I can use the side of the crayon. So it makes a nice soft color, and you can cover a lot of area in not too much time. You see how it's nice and light? And I'm going to come about halfway down. And you can see where the halfway point is on my paper because I actually have four pieces of paper taped together so you can see right where the middle is. Now a tip for you is that if you put several pieces of paper underneath, I actually have five or six pieces of paper underneath this one. It makes the color show up a little bit better. But just like that, I'm done with my sky. Now I'm gonna do my picture with crayon, but I would recommend that you guys draw with pencil first, see if you like it, and if you like it, well then you can color it in with any kind of colors that you want. Now, almost every landscape picture is gonna have a horizon line. Horizon is that line that separates the sky from the ground. And I'm not going to put my horizon right in the middle, because when you put things right in the middle of a picture, it makes it kind of boring. So we're going to go a little bit lower than that. Here's the middle of my paper. Here's the bottom, of course. So right between the middle and the bottom, I'm going to have a straight line. Just like that, right in the middle. Okay. If yours isn't perfectly straight, that's okay. Now from the line that I just made, I'm going to take another color and I'm going to go right from here and I'm going to come about halfway, maybe a little bit farther than halfway, but pretty much with a straight line. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight because we're dealing with nature. Nature is never perfectly straight. But right here, I've established or I've made my foreground. The foreground is the part of the picture that's closest. The background is the stuff that's farthest away. So already I have my horizon line and my foreground. Now right here is gonna be my middle ground. On my middle ground, I'm gonna have some trees and my trees are gonna be just zigzag. The zigzag line. Some are a little bit taller, some are a little bit smaller. They're all about as tall as my pinky. My pinky is a little bit bigger than yours. So your trees are gonna be a little bit smaller. And I can start coloring them in if I want. And when it comes to coloring, you know, there's always some teachers who are really fussy and they want you to stay in color right inside the lines and don't scribble and make it look nice and neat. Some teachers like that. Well, I'm one of them. I'm one of those teachers. Now, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with scribbling. Sometimes I love scribbling. Sometimes scribbling looks great. But the thing about scribbling is you guys already know how to scribble. You don't need to, me to teach you how to scribble because you can already do that. And if I don't teach you anything, well, then why do they pay me the huge amounts of money that I make? A lot of people don't know that teachers make crazy amounts of money, like NBA salary kind of money. A lot of people don't know this. But Mrs. Gay, she makes about the same amount of money as LeBron James. Who knew? I'm going to stop right now because right here I'm going to I'm going to draw something with my foreground. So I'm going to maybe finish coloring this a little bit later, and I'm going to draw my mountains right here. Now the thing about mountains is that you have to draw what you really see, what they really look like, instead of what you think you see. Because a lot of times people draw mountains and they make them tall and skinny, just like trees. And actually, mountains are more like big hills. They're like this. Instead of going up and down and up and down like this, they go more like this. Especially the mountains around here. The Adirondack Mountains, because they're so old, they're not tall and then 
big valleys and then tall and big valleys. They're more like hills. So I'm going to start right around the middle of my sky. I'm going to go about halfway up my sky, and then I'm going to move it over maybe just a little bit. Because like we said, things that are right in the middle of the picture are a little bit boring. So I'm going to move it over this way just a little bit, and I'm going to come down only a little bit, not down right down towards the trees, but I'm going to go pretty much towards the middle of my picture. So I'm going to go down and maybe up a little bit, and then down and up a little bit. And that's all. They don't go way down and way up and way down. They don't curl like this. They just go down and then up a little bit and then down a little bit up. And then like that. Now, because my sky is so nice and light, when I color in my mountains, they're going to stand out a little bit more. And I can color all the way down to my trees, or if I want to, See how I'm coloring with little short lines, not big, long, scribbly lines. These are scribbly lines. Be patient and color neatly. Because even if your drawing is really good, if it's not colored neatly, it's not going to look as nice, no matter how nicely you've drawn it. And I hope when you watch these videos, you learn something. You can always learn something every day. Now, like I've learned that I hate my voice. I don't know how you guys can stand it. I mean, everyone always says that they hate their voice when they hear a recording of it. But until I started making these videos, I didn't realize that I sound like the guy that Eddie Murphy makes fun of in Beverly Hills Cop. I'm not following for the banana and the tailpipe. Okay, you guys haven't seen that movie, but your parents or your grandparents would know what I'm talking about. Okay, now I've colored enough. Maybe I'll get back to it a little bit, or maybe I'll step aside and just kind of finish coloring it later. But now I've got my horizon line, my middle ground, and my background, which is my mountains. And I haven't quite finished coloring them, but I will in a minute. But I'm just very eager to get started on this tree right here. My foreground. Because it's so close, it's going to be darker. You know how when you're driving down the highway, well, maybe not when you're driving down the highway, but, but mom or dad are driving the highway. And you look at the mountains that are close, they're a little bit darker. Sometimes you can even see the green trees and the gray rocks. But off in the distance, they turn more of a soft blue. And then the ones that are even farther away, they get lighter. So generally speaking, in a daytime scene, the things that are closer are going to be a little bit darker. And the things that are farther are going to be lighter. So I'm going to start on my foreground right in the middle. And when I get to the middle, you tell me to stop. Oh, okay. I'll stop right here. And I'm going to go straight up. That was a little tiny tree, but I'm going to go way up even taller than my mountain because it's so close, it's going to look bigger than all of these trees. And we can't leave a tree just being one stick. So we have to give it a shape. And what is the shape of all these other pine trees? It's kind of like a triangle. Now, the thing about my triangle is I want to keep it skinny. I can always make it wider if I want to, but I'm going to start out skinny. So I'm going to take this with my crayon. I'm going to make it look like a triangle, a skinny triangle, just like these right here, kind of like the top of a witch's hat or, for, or a wizard if you're one of those Harry Potter or uh, Lord of the Rings fans. It took me a while to think of Lord of the Rings. Okay, now once I've got my triangle, I can fill it in. And guess what? It's time to scribble. I'm going to scribble nice and dark, but back and forth and up and down. But I'm staying inside that triangle shape. And you can see how it looks like all those branches going in different directions. They go up and down and across. And just like that, just by scribbling that triangle, maybe some branches are a little bit longer. They stick out even a little bit more. And there you go, I've got my pine tree. He needs what? He, a little brother? He needs a little brother, so I'm going to give him a little brother. I'm going to peel my paper back a little bit. And he's going to have a little brother. Now, he's also pretty big, but he's not quite as big as his big brother yet. 
He's also a skinny little triangle, and I'm going to color him in with scribbles. And go up and down and across, and I'm staying inside that triangle shape. If I wanted to, I could give a third little brother, but I'm going to stop right here at this point. And now that I've done my foreground, I could come back and color in my sky and the rest of my trees right here. Okay. Now I'm going to take my dark green and along the bottom, I'm going to color it a little bit darker. And I'm coloring straight across, not up and down. And this time I'm not scribbling because the easiest way to go from dark to light is if you go across. So dark on the bottom, lighter on the top. I'm coloring dark here. And then as I go towards the trees, I'm making it lighter and lighter. And you got to make things light. You just don't press down as hard. And it's okay if it's a little bit scribbly, but you can see all my lines go pretty much straight across. That way, it's easier for me to go from dark to light. Okay. And the reason I did that is because now when I add a different kind of green, it's going to give it a little bit of texture. Now, if you want to make your grass all one color and you don't want to bother with this little shading trick that I showed you, that's fine. I'm just getting a little fancy dancy for the people who want to get really detailed and realistic with your picture. But you don't have to do all these things. You just make your picture look the way that you want it to look. Okay, now the last thing that I have to draw is my lake. I'll take my blue crayon and I'm gonna go across. Now some of these lines can be long, some can be short, and it's okay if they're not all touching. If you have a little bit of white space, that's okay. It's gonna make it look like waves, so I'm gonna go Longer and shorter and longer and shorter. And just by leaving it with a little bit of those white spaces, you can see how it looks like a nice, tranquil lake with some waves going back and forth. And that's what my lake looks like. If you want to put a a rowboat or a motorboat or somebody fishing or swimming in your lake, you can do that too. I'm so close to being finished, I think I'm going to finish right now. I'll put some trees even back here. I'm going to finish up my trees. Maybe a little bit more color in my mountains. Again, I'm coming with little lines. Not scribbling. Unless you really, really want to scribble. Because I guess the most important thing with our picture is to have fun. Even more than making a great picture is having a really good time. And as I'm finishing up here, I can tell you that I had a really great time. And I hope you guys do with your picture also. I hope you take some pictures of it and you send it with me and I can share it uh, with everyone on my student art gallery. But until we connect again, stay creative, stay positive, and be good to each other. Thanks.